So listen, I'm going to cough now and get a cough drop. Nobody move. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Doink. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. I have a cough lozenge in my mouth because I have the most terrible cough, unfortunately. So forgive me for, uh, for this, but uh, that's okay. I'm thinking I should go get my... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, something's going around. Drupal South, Melbourne, 2015. Um, I had a great time. How's it, uh, how's it been for you, Hussein? It's excellent. It's a great combination. Camp, and the city, lovely. I, had a, I just had a wonderful time here. Mm. Not counting since today morning when I've been down with fever and. Aha! But it's great. It's it's been great. And Jibran, how's your how's your event been? Well, it's a very special event for me because I work for uh, an Australian shop. Uh, so I am from previous next. <laughs> so. That, uh, after working with them like say, past 10, 12 uh, months, uh, this is uh, the first time I was meeting them in person. Wow! So uh, I met some of them at DrupalCon Amsterdam, but not all of them. So this is the only event where we get to get, you know, we get together and we have a team dinner. Uh, First day at the first day of Drupal South, so yeah, that was fun. And this is a special event for me because I get to meet all my you know, colleagues, and I have seen a lot of you know, uh, people at, in Australia, and I have seen Australian, uh, you know, power, like Drupal power, and they are yeah. So it's awesome. Okay, so the three of us, I think, are among the people who traveled the furthest to be here. I, I guess so. So, Hussein Abbas, you came all the way from Bangalore. That's Bangalore, right? yeah. Um, how long did it take to get there? Uh, well, the flight was 15 hours, including a three hour layover. So, I would say not too bad. I mean, I, but yeah, for me personally, this has been the longest flight yet. Aha, and uh, Jibran Ejaz, all yeah. the way from Lahore, Pakistan. Yeah. How, how long was your trip to get here? Yeah, it's 24 hours. <laughs> 24 hours? Wow. Yeah. That's, that's cute though. <laughs> I flew 27 hours. Okay. Just the flying, not even the layers to get here. Okay. Wow. But nonetheless, and despite some crazy jet lag, weird voicing, um, I think there have there've been some great sessions and there's an amazing energy yeah. in the Drupal community yeah, in Australia, right? It. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't feel like there are just 300 people over here. It feels like, I would say 1,500, 2,000, maybe 3,000. I mean, everywhere I go, people, the discussions are great, the talks, uh, it's amazing. Mm. It's, it's really a different side of, I mean, I have been in, in a lot of camps in India and they have been great, every, everything. But this is a very different kind of camp than what we have been uh, holding in India. Uh, in India, the focus is more towards uh, uh, students and adoption because that's the problem India really faces at this moment, uh, getting everyone to contribute. Uh, there are a lot of Drupal users, but not contributors uh, and oh, uh, this is a camp where there is no such hurdle it's a different this is a different uh, the problem is not the right word we are, we are dealing with a different issue here I think you're at a different uh, stage in the community yeah. development perhaps mm -hmm. now part one of the reasons why I wanted you both on the podcast is because both of you are contrary to what you were just saying um, both of you are huge Contributors, both of you have been doing a lot of work on Drupal 8, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So how many, how many, how many patches, uh, credits do you have in Drupal 8 right now? 170. 170. Yeah. 100, and you are close behind with? Uh, not close behind. I'm at 120. 120. Yeah. That's pretty. That's okay. So first of all, thank you for amazing contributions. Now, being a great contributor can end up landing you a job in a foreign country. That's yeah. pretty incredible. But I'm also fascinated by the idea that um, 
We can write abstract code and it makes the world a better place, right? And, and, and by participating in open source, not just consuming it, but actually participating, then you've gotten the chance to learn even more, right? And do even more. Yeah, yeah. So what do you feel is important um, in your country? Um, what do you need to, what difference will it make when you convince more people to come in and, and, and really participate, contribute, be part of the community? Well, um, I, I would say w one thing, it's uh, kind of, uh, well, okay, not really controversial, but uh, I have been to, like I said, I've been to a uh, few Drupal camps in India, and I'm part of the camps in Bangalore, almost every, every month we have the sprints and so on. And one thing we see, that uh, there are people from all walks of life, they come over there, and, and different level, uh, different ages, and uh, different levels at the programming skills. But uh, once they're all together in that room or in that hall or in that building, and everything else just dissolves away. It's just, you know, the people, and I mean, like I said, you know, everywhere you go, there's just one conversation, Drupal this, Drupal that, or web technology this, web technology that, whatever, you know, it's, it's about uh, making an improvement somewhere. Uh, there are, of course, there are uh, tough problems to be discussed and everything, but overall, the energy in any such camp has been amazing. And uh, like I said, uh, the people coming together and even for a moment forgetting all their differences, wherever else they might be having differences, and talking about one thing, let it, you know, I mean, uh, it, it could be something, uh, a line of code, but still, it uh, helps them come together and Talk about some. Uh, talk about the same topic. That's great. I mean, and and then everybody's topic. just a Drupalist in that moment. That's right. Yeah. Somebody wants to learn Drupal. Somebody wants to teach Drupal. Somebody wants to talk about an advanced topic. But everybody is talking about Drupal, and everybody is interested in what anyone else has to say. So it's it's great. I mean, uh, camps are one of the few times you know when you uh, when you never feel like you're running out of energy. And do you think that um, with more and more open source, more and more Drupal in governments, in universities and public bodies, that this could, could make society a better? Do you think that it could, this idea could spread to connect more people together? Definitely, because uh, as, as you can see in Drupal South, uh, we have a lot of government uh, related people here. We have proper govs, we must meet uh, boffs and session. And, you know, government uh, about government and open source, and then uh, I attended uh, I attended a BOF uh, with universities, and uh, they how they have the similar kind of problems, and how you know Drupal world can help them, your Drupal community can help them to fix those issues, uh, and I have seen some of the, those university uh, folks here today at Drupal uh, course Sprint as well, so. And I think uh, uh, we uh, we all have the same goal for you know uh, to improve Drupal and uh, to provide a better solution in Drupal and uh, for them for us and uh, uh, that that is the reason I can think of that they are here today so yeah so that definitely we are improving a lot of you know uh, communities and uh, governments and universities together yeah. And on the other side, we can also say that you know, the, since the cost of uh, acquisition, the overall cost of entry into any such uh, product for the government as a whole becomes uh, much lesser. You know, uh, the benefit is ultimately driven to the people. Now, uh, and of course, it's a, it's a long uphill battle, especially in countries like India. I'm not very sure about Pakistan, but I'm, I'm imagining it's like more or less the same situation there. But uh, it, it is very necessary, and plus, uh, uh, as a as a Drupal co-contributor and as a uh, user of Drupal since what, four six years, I'm not I don't remember. But um, I have seen what a solid, good technology and base can do uh, in determining the end product. So I mean, of course, there are good ways to build a Drupal site. There are bad ways to build a Drupal site. But even a bad Drupal site will still be better than most other. Websites. There are no bad Drupal sites. <laughs> you can't build Drupal sites. How did you discover Drupal? Do you have a first memory? Uh, yeah. So I was a, I am, you know, telecommun telecommunication engineer uh, by my, you know, graduation. 
So I was telecom engineer at Motorola, but coding was always my passion. So I have um, some friends uh, uh, which are very passionate about coding. So we used to hang together, uh, hang out together, and you know, uh, sit together and code about that. And uh, back in Pakistan, I have a friend who taught me, you know, uh, uh, how you can write code and customize Drupal and how you can uh, write a contrib module. Uh, it, is back in late 2010 uh, so uh, it was Drupal 6 by then so uh, then uh, Drupal uh, 7 came along and we have a, a huge shift from nodes to entity and that was a uh, uh, you know <laughs> so I have got to learn that and you know I, uh, after I lagged behind from the current development in Drupal because uh, you know all the learning curves and stuff so then at that point in time I decided that why not contribute to Drupal 8 and learn from there so that was kind of my story wow so, perfect so the first patch I did was uh, about uh, porting the spelling correction in node.tpl from Drupal 7 to, was into Drupal 8 <laughs> And thank you for that. <laughs> so you said you, you said you don't even remember exactly when you started Drupal. Yeah. Do you know what version it was? It was six. It was uh, six. I, I built a website with Drupal six, uh, and that was the only website I built with Drupal six. Immediately, Drupal seven came out almost immediately right. later. And uh, yeah, since then it's been Drupal seven. And although I have been, when I was introduced to Drupal, it was Drupal five. But I had something against uh, CMSs, frameworks. Uh, you know, I was like a native PHP. Ah. I've been working with PHP since 2000. Uh, okay. And uh, always native PHP. Right. I didn't get that. And I see many people with uh, that kind of attitude. And now I am, ironically, I'm trying to change that. Right. And now you're a little bit older and a little bit wiser. <laughs> and you don't feel that you have to write a user login system for every right. every system you make, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what made you stick with Drupal? Why are you still doing Drupal now? Well, uh, you know, and in a profile somewhere I've written that, you know, I like writing code which is like poetry. And if it isn't, I, I can't sleep. And Drupal is exactly that kind of code. Wow. <laughs> that might be the best answer to that question that I've ever had. Both of you have been working uh, a lot on Drupal 8. Yeah. So I want to know from each of you, what are you most excited about in Drupal 8? Or, or what do you think is going to bring the biggest benefit to users of, of Drupal 8? I think it would be the, the underlying system. That's the section I'm mo most interested in. And, uh, and that's almost all my patches go there anyway. It's really uh, the, the reusability factor. That now that Drupal 8 is, uh, you know, to quote Larry Garfield over here, it's, it's no longer an island. I mean, we are, I mean it, we are connecting to other islands, really. It's, it's, that, that is what, that's something which excites me most. So, you know, I have written my own set of PHP components back in, uh, you know, years back. I don't even remember when, maybe 10 years back and all that. Uh, and uh, when I started with Drupal, I realized I didn't need most of them, but there were some which I had to uh, move, and it was a job of copy pasting and all that. But now in this new modern PHP Renaissance world, we don't have to do that. Composer and seeing Drupal adopt it, uh, uh, I was talking to somebody regarding uh, all this, and uh, uh, I, I, I'm not sure who it was. I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot the person, but he mentioned that Drupal is probably the first product of PHP Fig. I mean, and all the PSRs. Yes. Yeah. So uh, first real application mm -hmm. built on all these um, things. So it's great. You know, this is that Drupal is leading the way. It just reinforces my belief in it since the beginning. The, what I said about code earlier, it's the same thing I mean. That, great, and, and now you can write Drupal implementations of your, of your PHP libraries. Exactly, right? yeah. <laughs> it's great, and you don't have to write a module yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, that's what, that, that is what I'm trying to encourage, uh, I'm already trying to encourage to everybody, especially in my company, I'm trying to move the trend away from, you know, everything in a module to everything in a component. I've been working on that. Long way to go, I mean, yeah. And since Drupal 8 is changing rapidly, even now, it is still it's very difficult to get people on board that. But I'm seeing some results, and that's mm, fantastic. And what are you most excited about in Drupal 8? Well, uh, I have worked uh, in a lot of Drupal components, so uh, 
I have a lot of favorite things uh, to late. I can't pick one, but the main uh, thing I think uh, we achieved in Drupal 8 is that reusability of the idea. Uh, what I mean here is that uh, the approach, uh, you have to learn that approach for once and then you can apply that approach everywhere in core. Uh, you just need to have, you know, the knowledge of one thing and you can, you know, reuse that knowledge in all components. Like you can write block plugins and you can write views plugins and you can write uh, uh, field plugins. So all these things are, are designed in such a way that you only have to learn one thing and you can apply it all over the core. So just like triple seven. <laughs> no, not, not like Drupal 7. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> right, and in Drupal 7, you have to learn 20, 21, 22 systems, right? And each one does came at a different time from a different person yeah. with the best intentions, right? Yeah. yeah. But this has been designed from the ground up to work in a unified way. Yeah, so that's the best thing I can think of as a developer point of view. Uh, other than that, uh, as Zan said, that reu reusability of, you know, uh, bigger code, you know, PHP community is doing a great work, you know, and Symfony and Huzzle and, you know, all other libraries and we go to use them and we are now very proud to say that it's not invented here, you know. Right. So if everyone is doing everything wrong and we are doing so everything wrong and if everyone is doing everything <laughs> right, so we are with them. So, yeah, we are now... Uh, part of uh, you know bigger picture. Mm. Bigger Actually, bigger. I use that in many of my talks. Uh, I mean, it's like one talk which I've repeated in some camps. I see we have moved from not invented here phrase. Uh, we used to say, okay, it's not invented here. We're reusing something else. But from there, we have moved on to proudly invented elsewhere. Yeah, I think it's Larry, the same Larry, thing. Larry but the attitude same. has changed. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing, but the attitude has changed, and that is that's what is great. Mm. Well, thank you so much for your contributions and thank you for taking the time to talk with me. It's really, really been great to meet you in person. Same, and it's my pleasure. All right. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>